Hello YouTube, this is Kai from Kai Labs, and today we're talking about MediGrid, which is ADSR's newest sequencer tool. And as you can see, it has a very <laughs> unique interface, but it reminds me of, um, yeah, Hexel. And you can see it's from the same programmers because all the interface colors and all that stuff is the same, but function wise, it's totally different. We will talk about the similarities and the differences later in the video. So what we, what you can see is that it is a eight step sequencer. Now you see there is a sequence, a possible sequence in that direction and possible sequence in that direction or going from this in this direction and reflecting to the other side, because at the edges, there are the nodes to be played. So that means whenever one of those blocks that move through this grid reach an edge, it plays either the nodes on the vertical or on, on the horizontal side. So for example, this one will play the note F sharp four, and this one, when it is reflected here, and it will play F sharp two and will reflect back to this side. So if I just use that for demonstration. And you already saw something special here. When this block and this block collided, there was an interaction. This interaction is randomized, so it can change its direction or not. <laughs> you can program everything here and nothing will change your program. But if you insert possibilities, like the possibility for two blocks to collide, then it changes in a way that you can't predict anymore. Or you can just put in something like that, and this will also randomly either change the direction or not. For example, like that. And as you can see, the patterns that result from that are very interesting and, as I said, not, predict not totally predictable and that integrates some tension into your songs. So let's have a look, uh, a deeper look on the interface. As you can see, you have the possibility to choose the scale here. For example, a major scale, and you can also choose the root note. For example, if I double click, it's C3. So, and you see, it automatically changes all the notes to the scale and the root note. And now, It's of course totally different. So you can change that, for example, to a Dorian scale. And as you might have seen, these are only notes at the moment, but you can also play chords here, for example, like that. Okay, that sounds like a dying cat, but maybe we can change it and have a dying dog.
Yeah, changing the root node changes a little bit the character of the whole thing. We already talked about the scale that you can choose from. As you can see, there is a small uh, assortment of scales right now. If you will compare it, for example, to Scalar or so, this is not a lot, but I think for a version one, this is quite impressive. Okay, so we have the possibility to change the scale, we have the possibility to change the root node. As you can see, we can when you manipulate the node length, you just click on it and press, keep uh, your mouse button pressed and move the mouse up or down and that changes the values. So that was the note length and the speed you can also manipulate as well as the velocity and a variation of the velocity. That is another part that can be randomized and there's also a swing possibility that means that the step sequencer can deviate from a machine like, you know, pop, 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 pop on the beats and just put in a little bit swing and you can do that really, <laughs> can really <laughs> use a lot of swing if you want to. That's what you can do in the basic settings and you can also use different blocks. You can have a lot of blocks if you want to. You can go back to the bonfire. That was the preset I used from the beginning. And that's really nice. But just let's assume you don't like the scales here. So what do you do? Well, you can change the single notes. Click on it, press your mouse button and move the mouse. And you can just change the note to whatever note you want to. So for example, I developed a rather conservative progression. Just let me load it. And as you can see, I just programmed all the notes myself. So let's talk about um, chaos. This sounds very nice and neat, but there's no chaos in it. Let's put some chaos in it. For example, like that. Maybe a 
another one too. So as you can see, it's really a fun tool. It's very easy to operate with. And if you want to export your arpeggios or whatever you did, you can do that easily with this. As you can see there, I just pushed it. And I can push it again and there's another one. I can also go here and just choose how many bars. For example, I can also only choose one bar and then it's only one bar that is exported. So this is also very easy and if you think, oh no, I want to start something totally new, no problem, you just go on reset and everything is as new and then you just choose again your scale and your root node and then you can add it from there. And let's talk about the differences to Hexel. Here you see Hexel in comparison to MIDI grid. As you can see Hexel has a different grid where all the nodes are on the fields and not at the edges. And you don't have those blocks. You, you can have the nodes but they won't be played until you have emitters. And again, dying cats. But you see, that there is a difference. Also, if some of those emitted triggers meet another trigger, there is no interaction. Whereas on the MIDI grid, there is always an interaction between the blocks when they meet each other. And also you have different uh, a different philosophy. Because of the emitters, you will have every bar you will have a new emitted note and if one of uh, the triggers leaves the grid it's just lost whereas with midi grid it is just reflected so if we change that And as you can see, there is no uh, special scale. You have to choose your own, the notes you want to have played. And if you choose the wrong notes, you will <laughs> have a problem. But uh, if you choose the right ones, it most probably will sound okay. So let's see. So the interfaces look very similar, but the they are function-wise very different, as I said from the beginning. And I think this is fine, because so you have a choice. And as I always said, Hexel is a lot of fun. I think MIDI Grid is also a lot of fun. What I found during testing MIDI Grid is that if you just switch through the presets, at a certain point it will lose track of the 
um, of the rhythm and it will be out of rhythm. But if you just stop it then and start it again, it will find its rhythm again. Personally, I love such interfaces. I lo love such very interesting programmable sequences that don't overwhelm you with functions. And this is really a simple tool for simple sequences and for that it is really great. And they say, okay, you can be inspired through it because of the randomness in it. I don't know if it really inspired me, but at least it uh, it is a lot of fun. And if you uh, have fun, you will be creative. So I think it deserves to be called inspiring. Okay, okay that was it. Enjoy my other videos and thank you for buying me a coffee. Bye bye.